episode 82 wake and Rake podcast yeah we're doing it again because we've already recorded this podcast once and i forgot to hit the record button so this second round of this episode right now brooksy is about to be really really good it, it, i i'm just glad you came out of the shoots and told everybody the truth because i was about to blow you up anyways honest mistake and i how many times have i actually been like hey hit record because it, it, it pops up on my screen and i have to like okay it and for some reason I didn't think twice about it. So, whatever. I don't want to Let's talk get... about it. We don't have to. We can talk baseball. That's fine. We have blind resumes for the second time I'm saying this. We have blind resumes. That's the meat and potatoes of today's episode. I'm going to give Brooksy five blind resumes. It's actually going to be two side-by-sides. I'm not going to name the players. I'm not going to give the names. I'm just going to give him stats side-by-side. You can call it chair-picking if you want. That's fine. He's going to have to pick which of those two players he would rather have just based on those numbers. So player A, player B, I have stats in front of me. If you guys, obviously, you're listening to just the pod, not on YouTube or any of our platforms, you're not going to be able to see the stats. So if you want to, just go check us out on YouTube and you can actually see the stats. But I'll I'll kind of talk my way through it, read some stats and why I'm picking who. Just to confirm, I'm not picking i'm not trying to name the player who i think it is right because i feel like that's pretty impossible i'm just picking a player and then you're going to tell me who it is okay easy enough you hear how good this episode sounds because we've done it once before does it yeah a little deja vu right now betonline.ag is your number one source for all your basketball info stats news and scores get the latest odds and lines including the latest player reports for this year's pro basketball playoffs Bet online is always your sports information headquarters this season as we have you covered for all your sports wagering needs, basketball, MLB, NHL hockey, right to UFC and boxing. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info, including live betting options and your favorite casino and card games you can play right from your home. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Be sure to use our promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. Let's talk a little ball, Brooksy. Um, big takeaways so far from the season. We're a month in. Diamondbacks are Can doing Can we just well. roll through like off the top of my head? Tampa's doing well. All right. What was that? Diamondbacks are doing well. Tampa's doing well. Your Sox are doing well. Uh, what, what comes to mind? Uh, Yankees are in trouble. Yankees are in trouble with their injuries. Uh, obviously with... Montas missing the year. Rodon hasn't even does he even have a jersey number yet. I haven't seen him. Um, Pitching is Cole's... the issue for him though. Like it's huh? the offensive consistency is the problem with the Yankees. It's really not the starting rotation. I mean, it would help if they had. I mean, they're missing three guys. Sure, sure, but like it's just the same. So I hate hit, hitting the panic button in April, May, but the Yankees right now, like like they could go on to win a division. Make the playoffs. I can they see won't. for sure. But but let's say hypothetically they do. I'm concerned because they're the same team that they are the last four years. One dimensional. They're way too reliant on the long ball. They pitch decently. Their bullpen's decent. And then they get injured way too much. It's the same team. And this is the team that got swept last year in the American League CS by the Astros. They looked completely outmatched by the yeah. Astros a year ago. They've looked and you know, with pitching, with pitching, you can get away with that in a You know, a three-game series, a five-game series, maybe even with good pitching. You know, just score three runs and pray, right? But I just – I don't feel it with this team. I feel like there's just bad vibes there. And the injuries – I mean, you hate seeing guys like Stanton, Judge. Like, you don't want to see those guys hurt, man. Like, the game needs those guys, right? I don't want to talk too much about the Yankees. There's a lot of other stuff that stand out to me. Other teams that stink. The White Sox. My goodness gracious. What's going on? Still single digit wins, I think. Nice. Uh, St. Louis Cardinals, what happened? What happened? But then you got teams shining, man. The, the, the Diamondbacks are playing really good baseball. They're just behind uh, the Dodgers, correct? In the NL West. Right. Um, they were leading it there for a bit. Corbin you know what's Carroll weird about the Diamondbacks? Good. You know what's weird about the Diamondbacks is they're last in all of baseball and base on balls. Weird. So they don't even give a shit about taking pitches. They just rake and show off their athleticism. They're just not missing their pitches. It's very rare. Very, very rare. Normally your top teams are also getting on base at a high clip. Right. Cubs. Hey, the Cubs are 
overperforming. They were they were I mean Diamondbacks are your pick like out of nowhere team to be a contender. The Cubs were mine. They're still playing good ball. I put nothing past David Ross to manage and get the most out of his players. So, um, I don't, I'm not saying they're going to win that division, but I think they're going to be in a mix for a wild card spot. Uh, what else? Seattle's just kind of been like, okay, I feel like they have some ways. The Astros slow start. The Texas Rangers are good. They're off. They're not only pitching, they are hitting. Remember, we had concerns about their offense preseason. And Josh Young is, dude can swing it. He went deep again today. Dude can swing it. He went We're deep again today. Yeah. I um I want you to check your phone. I just sent you a tweet of something Wander Franco just did in a Major League Baseball game. And I'm going to want you to throw this on the pod. So, or make a video out of this because... I've never seen so Wander Franco goes up the middle, catches a ground ball. By the time you listen to this pod, you probably had seen this 500 times on highlights. He flips it up in the air, catches it barehanded, and then throws out. Was that Brian Reynolds? Yes. I think that was Brian Reynolds at first base. One of the more absurd things, because if he clanks that, he looks like the biggest jackass of all time. But he didn't. He made it look like he's playing slow pitch softball, and it's just that easy to some guys. Is this the new bat flip? No. This is okay. So here's the thing: if you you don't have to catch your bat when you flip it, you still have to catch this ball and throw guys out. Like that's an error if you miss it. I don't understand why people would be upset at this though. I think people would just be like, "This is stupid." It's fun, but it is pretty dumb. Yeah, it's meaning like it's it is the it's just more of the one of the more like look at me type. I don't even know why that crossed his mind to do that. What's the difference between yeah. this and there is no comparison? Somebody stopping right before the end zone and celebrating and then jumping into the end zone. I mean it's not that hard to fall into the end zone. It's hard to be on the move up the middle and throw a ball up barehanded and then make a throw. It takes much more skill. I just really hope people don't get stepping upset. over a line. Oh, I mean, the old heads are not going to like that. Sure. Sure. What well, said the old heads are not going to like it. No, I mean, sure. Like let them be upset about it. That's fine. Like there's a lot of people still barking about the game. Like, I know. I, but I you think have, you have pitch clock numbers, don't you? From the first month. I'll text them to you. Let me see. Okay, so we're looking at like 32 games into the season. Runs are up 14%. Hits are up 9%. Batting average is up 15 points. That's big. Steals are up 54%. And games are 27 minutes shorter. Is this not the exact definition of just like more action? Action Action-packed? How is this not better to watch i've been watching baseball non-stop since day one of the season it's my job as of you games don't drag man even three hour games don't feel like three hour games there is constant something going on we don't have to harp on this too much because we've done it in multiple podcasts in the past but this is what baseball wanted this is what a majority of fans that were going away from the game said this is what we need to like the game again. So there is still a, a group of people that say this is terrible. I can't go to the bathroom or I miss an inning or I can't go to the concession stand and, and get a, a beer because the game went by too fast and teams are trying to work with that. Trust me, they're losing money on concessions too. They want you to have stuff. Um, I, they're just, I don't want to hear it's too fast because you were complaining about it was too slow and there's not enough action. And now it's too much action. Now it's too fast. And the people saying it's not enough baseball. It's it's the same amount of baseball. It's just less people standing around doing nothing. There's no negatives. Unless, and if you want to have an extra beer, get one when you get home. I <laughs> guarantee it'll be a lot cheaper. Yeah. There's always, people are always going to have 
an issue with oh, something. You, it, it, you can't make People everybody happy. Like to complain. The grand scheme of things, it has been flawless. It's working perfectly. Because games are two hours and 40 minutes long, on average. I have worked multiple three-hour and six-minute games, and it doesn't feel like it. It still feels fast because you're not just like, all right, like, geez, what are we doing? No, it's just longer innings because runs are being scored. And it's fun to watch because that's baseball, not dead time. We don't have to keep talking about it. Our blind resumes are coming up. Let me just tease that real quick as we transition to, I'd say, do you know? I'd ask the question, but we've already done this episode once. So I already don't have to keep saying that. People don't know that. Okay. (laughs) We this is the first time that we have recorded this episode, and you have no idea who leads Major League Baseball in OPS, the top two leaders. Nope. Right? You have no idea who leads Major League Baseball in OPS, the top two leaders, right? Will please tell me who this third baseman for the Blue Jays named Matt Chapman and second in Major League Baseball among qualified hitters is Sean Murphy. And both those players used to play for who? Will Middlebrooks. Uh, that would be the Oakland Athletics. Yeah, I don't know what role playing we're doing right now, but um, let's stop doing that and let's just okay. talk about the A's and like what a disaster that franchise is. Not the fans, not the fans. This is a boycott. This is not an absence or a. I a mean, even even fans. before, let's be honest here. Even before they were protesting, they, they still were never top ten. They were never top ten, but before John Fisher took over, they were top 19th. ten. They were nineteenth in baseball before John Fisher took You're over. Talk about top ten, and they're almost top twenty. <laughs> okay, they, they're, I mean they're barely top. 20. Middle of the road. If you're nineteenth in baseball in attendance, that's fine. That'll play. Yeah. I. When's the last time they were nineteenth? It was two thousand and four before John Fisher took over. They were nineteenth in baseball and attendance. Um, Oh, 20 years ago. Okay. Yeah. And that was also the last time they gave Were you even contract. born? Yes, I was I was 96, baby. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, old, what were you, 35 then? Yeah. I'm not even 35 yet. Mm. I will be. This, I'm in my big poppy year right now. I'm 34. So we saw Oakland fans protesting around the ballpark this last weekend. We saw Tuesday night against the Seattle Mariners. They had an attendance of 2,500 people. We might and actually, I guarantee you it was no more than like 1,100. We might it looked actually, bad. We might actually have more listeners on this episode than the Oakland A's do on a day-to-day yes. basis in their ballpark. That's pretty close. Um, so we saw the protests. We saw people doing chants around the ballpark saying, sell the team, sell the team. What we did see this last weekend, too, is – Fans in right field have fans, or excuse me, have signs taped upon the right field fence saying sell the team, fire John Fisher, whatever. There's a home run ball in the right field. What Major League Baseball did on their official website, MLB.com, is they zoomed in on the home run, which then essentially blocked out and completely ignored the signs. that You can't even see it on the screen. So if you're watching highlights at MLB.com, you do not know that there is a protest happening out in right field. How shady is that? It's it's shady, but it's a business, and they're protecting their own ass. It's like, all right, I, I don't like politics at all, but let's just paint a picture here. If you watch CNN or if you watch Fox, they're going to paint a picture of what they want you to believe. Because that's the media. That's the news. Um, Unfortunately, that's just how it is. And Major League Baseball is protecting one of their own, which is John Fisher, right? So the commissioner and the league office essentially works for 30 owners, not the other way around. The owners are the ones with the money. They're the ones that make it happen. Uh, So... Let's say somebody who doesn't follow baseball closely is watching highlights and they see a home run. They're basically just like shielding them from the truth. Just like the news does a lot of times in certain situations. It's symbolic to how they've treated Oakland for the last two decades. Well, yeah. 
They've yeah. ignored everything. They've ignored the the stadium situation. Who has the league? Major League Baseball. The league? No, Danny. The ownership group has to make things happen. The league's not going to hold their hand. This is not on the league. This is They've on put pressure John Fisher. On this is no, 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 no. You have it wrong. You're see, you're watching the wrong news. <laughs> you're. This is it. Like, this is not on. Major League Baseball. This is on the team. This is on the team. They have to spend right. money. They have to have money to spend to do things. The league will okay it or say yes or no or whatever. But at the end of the day, Manfred works for the owners. He doesn't have the last say. You think he does. He doesn't. Things are voted on by the owners. And he's basically the mouthpiece. He's the the punching bag for people, especially in like CBA negotiations and things like that. This isn't on the league. Every issue that is going on within the Oakland Athletics is because of their ownership group refusing to spend money because they'd rather have that money in their pocket. I'm not, it's not my money. I'm not going to tell them how to spend it. They have a business model. They have a certain reason they haven't have done and haven't done what certain things, but it's not on the league. Dude. No one is saying you can't spend money. You can't get a new stadium. You can't this and at the end of the day, it really comes down to do they want to spend money or not? And it has nothing to do with the league. It has to do with the owner. Period. Right, we, can, we, we can agree on that. That That's fine. The what's hard- Well, you said, no, but the issue is you said, well, the league has been doing this to them for years. I think the 29 other owners should be holding John Fisher to a higher standard. If the, But if there's nothing to actually do that other than them saying you're a piece of shit. Yeah, and that's fair. That's what I'm And he con- doesn't care. That's what I'm conceding in this argument is there's no legal way to do that. What I'm right. saying is there sh- should be. There should be. Absolutely should be. And there and there will never be anything like that until there is a salary floor. Yeah. But there's never going to be a salary floor without a salary like hard cap. Like you're going to have to have both of them. Right. So until that happens like competitive balance and all this is one thing, but like really if you only want to spend forty million dollars, you only have to spend forty million dollars, and you still got to compete against teams spending two fifty. Here's what's hard for me to swallow: MLB.com is the official website for Major League Baseball. On and by that same token, they have official MLB reporters, they have official headlines, they have official news breakings, they have an official PR team. They have they're essentially a news business, right? By those details. So if you're a news business, if you're sharing news, if you have reporters, if you have a website, if you have sources, shouldn't you be held to the same standard that a news medium needs to be held to? Which news medium? Right. And, and going back to your your <laughs> point about CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, I I, I get it. I, I, and that's you my, will that's get my the whole facts how they want you to get the facts. Right. And if they don't, and if they can't come up with a way to get you the facts that, in a way that they want you to get it, then you just won't get them. And that's that's what we're that's what we're seeing right now. That's them hiding the, the 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 protest signs. That's it's just business, man. It's it's as simple as that. Like it literally is as black and white as cut and dry as that. It's business and they're protecting their business and their brand because that looks bad on their brand. Yes, it's one of 29 guys. I mean, one of 30 guys, excuse me. But that's all MLB is doing. I, I Is it is it wrong? Absolutely wrong. Does it suck? Yeah, it's shady, but I understand it. I don't agree with it, but I get it. MLB starters. Oakland is last in the league. And by starters, I mean starting rotations. <laughs> They're starting rotations 0-15 this year. Their team ERA as a starting rotation is Let me guess. 8. Uh, I was going to say 8-30. You'll have your time to guess some stats and play with some numbers. What is it? Eight, I was going to say 8-30. Keep going. No, it's 8.09. Oh, okay. I think it went down since we started this. Because of last night. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and because of last night, the guy was seven scoreless. Mason Miller, he and dude, lost or no decision, right? Uh, yeah, no hitter through seven. Yeah, they took. He him threw out. a lot of pitches. That's why he did, and he just got brought up from Double A and 
to triple a <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, Red Sox starter rotation 29th, 6.13 team ER. Or excuse yeah, me, yeah, but when they're averaging like five and a half, six runs a game, you get yeah. away with it. So, you're impressed with the Sox, then their offense has been rolling. I think their third best OPS in baseball behind it would be Tampa and Atlanta. Uh, they've been crushing home runs, they've been playing small ball, they're playing situational baseball. Um, I don't know the stat, but there's something for like productive outs. They like lead baseball in that, which is basically like moving guys over. Uh, I don't even know how to explain the stat. I would have to look into it, but they're making productive outs. They're having grind out bats or seeing pitches. The offense is great, man. The bullpen's been like middle of the road. Kinley Jansen's been very good. They've uh, Josh Winkowski, Cutter Crawford, John Schreiber. Like these guys have been really good. There's a couple holes to fill there. But um, starting pitching has just really let them down. Like, I think they've had 12, 12 comeback wins already this year. Already, 32 games. They're 12 comeback wins. The good omen. You want that as a team. Oh, they do. They fight. They grind. I'm not just, this isn't like, a, oh, you work for the Sox. Like, no, like, I would tell you if they suck too. I'm telling you their, their starting pitching has been dog shit. Um, I can't imagine it getting like worse, you know? So that that's good. Is like if the offense just comes down a little bit, the if the pitching comes up just a little bit with it, it's like okay, they're still going to be really good. I think their bullpen's going to be pretty consistent just with the guys they have. But the offense, dude, poof, fun to watch. They're up seven to three right now on the Blue Jays. They're, that's going to go three games to none in that four game series. Third best OPS in baseball, the Sox do, and fifth most home runs. Scoring runs is not an issue for Boston. Uh, what about doubles? You have doubles on there. I feel like they hit a lot of doubles. First in baseball, 71 doubles. There you go. They have started running more. They didn't run much the first like two weeks. But they've started being a little more active on the base pass too. So they're they're, they're a good ball team, dude. They're as I said early in the year, or right, before the season started, I said if they're gonna be contending for that last wild card spot, everything's gotta go right. Yeah. If everything goes right, they're in, in my opinion. Um, if they kind of stay how they are right now with like really good offense and just like really shitty pitching, it's going to be a fight just because of other teams around the league and the division's really tough. One last topic I want to hit for blind resumes. Did you watch or how much uh, the Mexico City series? Um, I watched a little bit of it. Yeah. Um, I just kind of so the ball is flying, right? So, so they're 2,000 feet higher than Denver, 7,500 feet. So Boston is like closer to sea level, right? So let me explain why the balls are flying. They have a humidor there. Every stadium in baseball has a humidor. So the balls can all be on like the same level. So in Denver, it should fly close to the same as it's going to fly in Miami, right? Even though there are two different altitudes and elevations. So 7,500, Denver's at 5,400. Uh, Boston is way down there, under 1,000. Uh, the humidor settings in Mexico were on like Boston settings, New York settings, Baltimore settings. So they literally, so that means the balls that got, in, got really hard and literally like they were hitting pro V ones. I mean, you're watching some of these swings. You're like, okay, maybe that gets to the wall. Oh my God. It's like 70 rows deep, like not even close. <laughs> it was fun, but like pitchers, I think Chris Bassett said it. He was like, there should be a rule like there should be no pitcher stats like they shouldn't count during that series because, I mean, the first game was the most ridiculous one and then it kind of wasn't as crazy but like, what eleven homers, twelve homers, something like that, oh insane. It was fun but my god, figured For out. Me, the biggest thing wasn't just that the ball was flying but you'd see a single to left field and it was like Mario Kart it just zoom, right off the outfield grass and straight. Everything was a hundred plus off the bat. Too. Yeah, like the ground was hard. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, I mean, it, Logan Webb, uh, <laughs> he said, I think they ate a little bit too much Mexican food down there. The San Francisco Giants did. And he said the entire team, three quarters of the, of, the, of the clubhouse has gotten the shits. So our thoughts and prayers are with the Giants. Got to be careful with those spicy foods, man. Don't yeah. drink the water. That was some spicy blind resumes, man. Let's get into it. We've teased our people too right. long. Let me, you just sent me the... Let me pull it up. 
So let, let me give you. I want to paint here. A picture. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna show like. You don't so have this to. This is that. like what I have. I will. Oh well, yeah, yeah. You can show people that. It's fine. So, so what I I'll have do like yeah. Is I'll screenshot or I'll uh, toss the comparisons on our YouTube page. So I understand that this segment is going to be a little tough for audio platforms. We are going to do our best to paint that picture for you. If you're having trouble, you know, seeing these two side by sides, head to our YouTube page. Everything's on there. You'll get more of a visual that way. Yes, that's just our way of plugging our YouTube page. But hey, you know what? I'm trying to help you out in the process as well. You're really going to like the last one. You're really going to like the last blind resume. There's five of them, right? I'm trying to count. There's, there's five of them. And okay. The last one you're going to absolutely love. We'll start with number one. All right. So I have hitter A versus hitter B. They're both around 1,200 at bats. This is since 2021. All right. Hitter A is a 268 batting average. Hitter B is a 266 batting average. They're pretty close. OPS is a little higher for hitter A. It's over 900. Um, I'm going through. Slugging is much higher for, for hitter A. 491 slugging. It's very good. It's 100 points higher than hitter B. Um, 87 homers, hitter A. Hitter B has 63. Hitter B has 37 bags. Jeez. This is tough. This is way tougher than I thought it was going to be. I am going to... Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. This made the decision for me. Okay. Defensive run saved. Hitter B has 28. Hitter A has zero. I'm guessing hitter A may be a DH. Just a guess. I'm going to go... I'm going to go hitter B here. They have a 11.5 F4, 37 bags, 141 RBIs, 28 defensive runs saved. They hit 266, 63 homers. Okay, like th there's some power. No, they lack power that hitter A has, but I feel like they're more of a complete player. So I'm going to go with hitter B. Hitter A is Shohei Otani. Okay. Hitter B is Mookie Betts. Okay. So you went with Mookie Betts, essentially. I went with Mookie Betts. And I'm just looking at, like, overall player. Okay. Like, hitter A was super intriguing because the power numbers were crazy. So defense is really what gave you the – or what gave Mookie the – And level. that's why it was – I was right. I said a DH. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, I want a well-rounded player because if that isn't a DH, then it's like, man, they haven't – they're not a good defender. Yeah. So, okay. Mookie. Okay. All right. Go so we're moving on to outfielder A. Go, go to pit. Go to pitchers. Go to pitcher A and pitcher B. One okay. More. Pitcher A versus pitcher B. Okay. They both started fifty-seven games. Dude, these are like the same people. Yeah. That's these really stats cool. are okay. Three hundred and thirty innings pitched to three hundred and forty-four innings pitched. Pitcher A has a two-six-two ERA. Pitcher B has a two-four-six ERA. They both have four hundred and twenty-plus strikeouts. Their FIP is basically the same. Strikeouts per nine, basically the same at like 11.5 and 11.1. Opponent batting average, Damn. 196 and 195. Like, this is insane. All right. ERA plus, they both are 163. Both given up 100 runs. Exactly 100 runs. This is since 2021. All right. And their war is basically the same. Okay. So I'm going to go with the pitcher. I mean, this is like splitting hairs, but I'm going to go with pitcher B. He threw 344 innings and has a lower ERA and he had more strikeouts. Um, so I'll go with that. Pitcher A is also Shohei Otani. I had a feeling. I had a feeling, uh, honestly. Yeah. And pitcher B is Max Scherzer. All right. I'll take, I'll take Mookie and Scherzer. Okay. But All right. Otani is one person. It's comparable to Mookie and Max. Both those guys. Mookie that's is pretty you know, that's 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 awesome. Actually. Mookie's making 300 million plus. Scherzer is the highest AAV in all of baseball. What 45 a year? Yeah. Yeah. And that's Otani that's, that's is, awesome. This I knew somehow you were gonna spin this to like the A's or Shohei. Whatever. Fine. Go to outfielders then. Outfielders. Well, yeah, there's two of those. 1,129 at-bats on the left. Okay. So outfielder A has 1,100 bats. Outfielder B, 1,100 bats at-bats. All right. Outfielder A, 271 batting average. B is 275. Uh, outfielder A has a 912 OPS versus a 
859 OPS. On base percentage is 428 for outfielder A. That's a big difference from the 348 of outfielder B. But slugging higher for B. So homers are pretty similar with 61 and 65. Stolen bases, 44 for B, 16 for A. Man. Defensive run saved. I know. That's what that gets me because I you know I like the complete player. Yeah. So war, outfielder A is a 13.3 war. Dang, dude. Is one of these George Springer? No. Okay. This is tough. I mean, I have a hard time going a Outfielder A gets on base more. I'm going to go B. I'm going to go B. Outfielder A essentially gets on base more and a little bit less power. power But I'm going to take power and defensive run saved. I think that's a really good combination. You save runs and you drive in runs. Okay, so you're going player B. Yeah. Player A is Juan Soto. Okay. Player B is Kyle Tucker. Kyle Tucker, one of the most most underrated players in all of the game. His numbers support that. Huh? These numbers support that. Yeah, yeah, totally. Man, dude, here, here's the thing. If you you hit for power and drive in runs, he also had 219 RBIs over that span. Yeah. And you're saving runs defensively. I'm surprised Soto has a one defensive run saved. He was metric by the metrics, one of the worst defensive outfits. Right, right. But still, I thought he must have had a couple years with negative. Maybe. Last year, he was a gold glove finalist, and everybody went berserk, myself included. Because he's gross. Okay. What do you want next? Third base? No, I'm saving that one for last. We have two more. Go one more outfielder one. Oh, yeah. I skipped it. All right. Outfielder A is a 233 hitter. Outfielder B is a 241 hitter. Outfielder A has a 792 OPS. Outfielder B is a 238 OPS. Okay. These are all since 2020. It's 2020, right? Okay, I'm just looking for stuff that stands out. Outfielder B has a much better, has a 60 point higher on base percentage, significantly lower slugging. Jesus, I'm going A. Uh, okay, Outfielder A has 15 defensive runs saved. Outfielder B has negative six. They have about the same war, 4.8, 4.9. Um, Outfielder A has 70 home runs. So, once again, you're giving me a guy who drives in runs and saves runs defensively mm-hmm. versus a guy who gets on base more, but he stinks at defense and he doesn't hit for power. I'm going out for A. This is an easy one for me. Adam Duvall versus Christian Yelich, and you chose Adam Duvall. Oh, God. All day, every day. Yeah? Yeah. Yelich has just been bad since 2020. Since yeah, his- you know I saw you know I saw him in Milwaukee when I was in, I was in the booth calling those games, and his at bats look much better. Yeah, I haven't I haven't followed his stats whatsoever, but like he was squaring the ball up, he was going the other way, he was working deep in accounts. He actually looked better, not like MVP better, but he looked like a serviceable big leaguer. He hits the ball hard. It's never been a lack of right. hard hit, you know. Right. All right, last one. You're All gonna, right, you're gonna love this, this. one. So this is their first two seasons of their big league careers. Third baseman A, third baseman B. Essentially the same amount of at-bats. Batting averages mirror one another. 254 batting average for third baseman A, 255 for third baseman B. OPS, basically the same. 756 for third baseman A, 760 for third baseman B. One of these is me. Why do you say that? I just the numbers feel that way. Hmm. It's is it A? Am I A? Just make your fucking pick. Why you gotta make it all about you all the time? I'm 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 taking A. Why? Less half as many errors, higher war, more uh, one extra homer, mm-hmm. higher slugging. Higher OPS plus. That's why. Third baseman A is Will Middlebrooks. Knew third, it. Base, third baseman B is Rafael Devers. 
No. God. Where's my money? Where's my $330 million? <laughs> Except after those two seasons, I my body started popping like pieces started coming off like Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's cool. That's really cool. I was looking at the stats and I was like, that looks that looks for how did you know that that was you though? Because it I lived this and I knew those numbers. Yeah. I knew those numbers. And I knew I went 15 and 17 in home runs my first two years. And that's 32. I, I, to our listeners, I swear on everything, I did not give Brooksy any type of Oh no, no, no. You you didn't. That would have ruined it for me yeah. because that was really cool. Um, that was fun. Just because like literally I'm going through these stats and I'm like, damn, those look like my first two seasons. I was like, ah, uh-uh, that's why you said I would like this. That's fun. Endeavors is decent. So he's salt basically player. basically the same player. All right. We're logging off early because we've had to do this episode twice. So we didn't uh, do this. We didn't do this stuff twice. We did not. You're right. We didn't do the blind resumes. That's we true. were just yeah. about to start. And yeah. then you were like, Man, I didn't record our episode. So sick. That's all good. Did it work this time, Dan? What's up? Did it work this time? It says it's recording, so we're going to find out. We're not doing it again, I'll tell you that much. Uh, Go take care of your sick kids. I'm going to go take care of, uh, go see my my sick nephew right now. But uh, everybody stay healthy. Baseball season. Get some warm weather here. Um, Talk to you next time on the Wake and Rake podcast. Part of the Bleed Network. Peace.